All right, now let's start thinking about our conclusion. You know that there are three parts to a good narrative story. There's the beginning, where we introduce the characters and the setting. We have the middle, which is introduces and talks about the problem and the main events in the story. But then we have our ending or our conclusion, the part of the story where the problem is solved and we kind of wrap everything up and give us, in a way, the moral or the, um, the theme of the story. So let's start on the next page and find out how to do a great conclusion. So your conclusion should be one that wraps your story up doesn't leave the reader with a wondering questions and it gives that sense of closure to your story so it's just not and then it happened and you're sitting there going okay how did it end where, where did they go from there you don't want to leave those questions lingering around you want to wrap that story up all right let's go to the next slide so let's look at an example of a conclusion for a writing task okay at the end of the story, write a conclusion for the story that includes the conversation that the characters might have afterwards. This would be a typical question for a narrative prompt on a writing assessment. So sometimes they will give you a part of a story and you have to really pay attention to those characters, the setting, and be able to add on and put the rest of the story together. Okay, so you have to be able not only to be able to write these characters and write these situations, but you need to be able to understand them through your reading so that you can continue your story. So you need to think about how the characters feel, what their thoughts are, how they would respond with a dialogue. Dialogue is very important when it comes to narrative writing. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so when you're writing the conclusion, ask yourself the following questions. Who are the main characters? What is the main problem? What events have taken place already? And how could this problem be solved? You have to keep in mind the voice, the setting, the tone, and the mood, okay? Voice comes from, are you understanding that this is coming in a first person or third person point of view? But also, is this a happy story or is this a sad story? You need to think about everything that goes into your, your tone and your mood as well. Those things are important to creating a conclusion because you would hate to take um, a conclusion for a story, let's say like a Disney princess story, and all of a sudden you're throwing in an R.L. Stein goosebumps ending. I mean, those two just don't match. So you gotta make sure that your conclusion matches the story. Let's go to the next slide. So how do I write a conclusion? Read the story that exists so far. You have to use your imagination. Think about how the characters feel. What would they think? How would they respond? What would they do? What would they say? Okay, you're tying up the end of the story with details and you describe the characters' actions their thoughts and their words. Remember, you're showing the story, not telling the story. And make sure your ending doesn't just stop. So if you're telling the story and then to end it, you go, the end, that just stops. There's no conclusion there. You've gotta make sure that whatever the problem was, it's been completely resolved and the characters are happy with, or yeah, the characters are happy with their ending. They understand it. They may not be completely happy with it, but they understand why things had to happen. And you have a conclusion. All right, let's go to the next slide. Here's our practice. So think about the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. And at the end of the story, they become friends. Write a conclusion for the story that includes the conversation that Goldilocks might have with the bears afterwards, okay? So let's see. The three bears stood in their bedroom and looked out the window. The room was a mess. Little small wee bear saw a hat on the floor. Oh no, Goldilocks left it behind. The bears did not know what to do. The girl was so rude to them, but they were very nice bears. They decided to try to find the girl and bring her the hat. The three bears went outside and looked for footprints. They saw some footprints going into the woods and followed them. They saw a house on the other side of the forest. It was Goldilocks' house. The bears knocked on the front door and Goldilocks' mother came to the door. She said Goldilocks was too scared to come out of her room. The bear said it was okay and gave her mom the hat. Goldilocks heard the bears talking and decided to come out. 
Little small wee bear said, we forgive you. Goldilocks felt bad for what she had done and apologized. Okay, this story, I've got a lot of questions, okay? Why did the characters all of a sudden forgive Goldilocks? It was very empty. It was very shallow. You know, there, there's no explanation of how the characters feel now, how they, why they responded that way. There was none of that in the story. So we understand that Goldilocks feels bad. The bears might still be upset about their house being messed up. You know, why didn't Goldilocks offer to help them clean it up? Why they could have become good friends. They could have smiled. They could have hugged. They could come back for a visit. Mom could have invited them in for a cup of coffee. You know, none of that went on in the story. So there was really no conclusion. It was very flat. So let's turn and try again. All right. So now we have the same story where the bears bring the hat back. Now let's really take another look at the conclusion. So at the bottom, read with me. To make things right, Goldilocks decided to go back to the bear's house and help them clean up. She worked all afternoon helping the bears make new porridge, fixing the chair she broke, and tidying up the bedroom. When they were all done, Goldilocks smiled and gave her new friends a hug. Little Bear said, come back anytime. Just remember to knock first. Okay, so now we have a true ending to the story. Okay, we showed where Goldilocks has learned her lesson. We showed where the bears, they did forgive her and she helped them clean up the mess and they worked to a new, toward a new friendship. Okay, so these were things that were um, a way of closing out this story and giving it a more well-rounded reading. Okay, I would much rather have read that than stopped where we were before. All right, let's go to the next page. Okay, so here we are with the same story, the same where the bears bring the hat back and Goldilocks feels bad for what she's done. We want you to write an ending to the story where Goldilocks feels embarrassed for her actions. <clears throat> she bakes them a cake to show she was truly sorry. They have a picnic and Goldilocks invites bears to play at her house next time. Goldilocks went home and told her parents what happened. So we want you to include those details into a well-rounded um, <clears throat> ending to this story. All right. Have a good day, guys.